Good afternoon, evening, morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Athena Games. Uh, this time, we will not be going to a galaxy far, far away, but the grim darkness of the far future. For we have something very, very cool. I'm really excited uh, to unbox for you today. Um, joining me is Dave. Welcome, Dave. Hello. Uh, this is one of our regular 30k players, or the Horus Heresy, yeah. um, who's kindly come down, given up his free time, and is going to come and we're going to chat about this very, very cool box of stuff. Um, so this is GW's latest big box of awesome, which is the Horus Heresy, The Burning of Prospero. So this is another standalone game for them, full of lovely, lovely models. Um, so we're going to briefly explain what on earth is going on in this box. Um, this is not a sequel to the Horus Heresy Betray at Calf. It is a different game, but it's obviously full of their wonderful wonderfully made um, plastic models so yeah so we're gonna quickly brief go over what the essentially what the plot line, plot line is what on earth is going on in this so yeah and then we'll unbox it because we haven't seen it yet it's still it's plastic wrapping yeah. we're, we're super excited um, this has been talked about on the internet for quite some time um, they were they were right and wrong at the same time and obviously um, Araman, so this guy here, um, leaked in a very bizarre way. Inside that death mask box. Yeah. And then sold by a chap in the Republic of Korea's Navy. Yes. To oh, really? Yes. Oh, wow. Because, <laughs> well, of course, if you're going to get something strangely turn up from the internet, you'll take a picture of it on top of paperwork and your uniform from your place of employment. Not what normal that's, people would do, but... That's obviously the, the greatest possible uh, plan you could ever have. Right! But that's what he did. Um, mercifully, it ended up in the hands of a Thousand Sons player uh, who has painted it up and there's pictures on the internet. Pictures on the internet. But hopefully, there will be more pictures on the internet yes. because this will be released very soon. <laughs> it will. So, um, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do the salesman pitch. So, it's going to be £95 or your regional equivalent um, from GW and most stockists from us. It's going to be 85.50, so we knock 10% off of it. So it's kind of nearly ten pounds off. Um, you're already getting sixty percent. Yeah. Is it sixty percent? Yeah, sixty percent off of the value of the set sold separately, but value added. Value added. And discount at Athena. Yeah. So if we have a quick pop it back, you've got um, it's using the same sort of cardboard tile system, except it's not sort of hexagonal. It's sort of just squares by the looks of it. Yeah. Unlike um, Calf that had hexagons and you could only have a certain amount of... It was bulk, wasn't it? Yeah. That's to be fair, this is going to be representing fighting across the uh, streets of Tiska, which is the final city on Prospero that was only protected by the telekinetic powers of the Thousand Suns, and that's when the uh, Space Wars dropped ground forces at Prospero. Yeah, so let's have a quick chat about the Age of Darkness and Horus Heresy. So, the Horus Heresy is set... 10,000 years before the present 40k universe. Mm -hmm. so. Oh, I'll grab these scissors. What about 28,000 years in our future? Well, yeah. I'll use my exact one. Oh, yeah, why not? Yeah, so this is essentially the golden age of the Imperium of Man. So they're, they're the big human faction in the game. Um, this, is their, this is them assembling their empire, essentially, or the downfall of their empire, which is. So this is when the Emperor of Mankind, who in the current 40,000 universe, is sitting on a sitting on upon the Golden Throne. Um, this is when he actually walked the Earth, like us normal mortals, and um, he had his sons as the Primarchs, and each son had his, their own legion. Uh, in this box we're going to get two of those legions, so we've got the Thousand Sons of Magnus the Red, They're the, he's the Sorcerer King, they're essentially powerful um, psychers, so in the 40k universe that's essentially they're wizards and mages essentially, and they're all uh, very learned and... Well, part wizard mages part mutants are uh, yes. the X-Men because they are the next step in human evolution Yes, they are and they're going to be facing off against um, the Wolves of Fenris, the Space Wolves very, very popular faction in the current 40k game um, also super cool in this one, because they're instead of their normal, uh, very light blue armour, they're wearing their Pre heresy grey armour. So hopefully we've got a camera up here and you should be able to see all of the sprues as we unbox them. Yeah. Um, so this is the Mark III power armour sprue. 
Is that an umber pattern bolter? I believe that is an umber, umber, umber pattern bolter. bolter. Which is different to the bolter pattern used in Betrayal at Calf. It's yeah. a minor fluff note, but yeah. it's nice because it helps it's differentiate a, the it's models. It's a slightly older version. Yes. Uh, so what else have we got on the sprigs? We've got... So we've got a thunder hammer on the sprigs. Yeah. Oh, thunder hammers. Yeah. Oh, I love thunder hammers. Um, yeah, just to mention, I play both, obviously play both 40k and 30k. Yeah, so um, so I play salamanders. Uh, Dave plays the iron warriors. Hmm. So. so let's see. So what differences can we spot? It's a shame. Um, I wish we could zoom in a little bit. Is there a way to zoom in a little bit more? Or am I being overly optimistic? There's some technical... That one? Oh, I'll do that. Ah, there we go. Let's try and zoom a little because that way we can show things off in all of their glory and all of their horror. Yes. Okay. So this so is a this, really cool. So that's that lined up. So what have we got? So what have we got? Well, we've got. Um, Should we go from top to bottom? Yeah, let's go from top to bottom. Right. So relevant to the camera. So we've got Should some nice. What am I doing? That camera's the other way up. So let's <laughs> do it like that. So yeah. what have we got? So. Standout points. The backpacks are coming in two parts. That's part of well, Mark Three was one of those marks that was we were told would be very very difficult to do in plastic. Uh, and you also, can see the compromises that they've had to make there. So we've got the two part backpack, and there'll be two part legs as well, which we'll get to in a bit because that's not the sprue with the legs on. Yes. Uh, it also looks like um, you've got two different versions of the backpack because you've got um, they've actually labelled them on the models, so you've got. A and B, and it looks like they pair up together. So let's flip it round. So let's have a look. That's at one of those. the trouble with early sprue release pictures. You'll often have to try and mentally map out the differences. Yeah. So um, I think it's just a little bit on the back, like there was uh, one of them had a skull, and the other one had like an extra sort of block. Ah, okay. Of um. Hmm. That's ooh, virtually. That's some cool it's stuff. Virtually there. imperceivable from this side, so yeah. that's good to know. So let's flip it. So, yeah, back. it's it's very possible that there isn't. Because hey, look, if on A you'll just see there's a mm. skull, and on B there's like a little, yes, a little sort of um, another. Because if you're anything like me, you'll end up pairing up B oh, with A, oh, yeah, a no. with B, and D with E, and it'll all go horribly wrong. Then yeah, it looks like there you go. You've got lots of different little variants on the bottom. So you've got um, sort of uh, single mm. round vents. You've got um, some. Rectangular vents. You've got like a nice bit. Of, nice One bit of the things I want to have a proper there. look at is those helmets because Lady Atty was saying she was loving the different variants on the Mark Three helmet there. So I'll have to have a look at that. Process. Yeah, yeah. We would um, if you have a look, um, look on the box when you hopefully get your copy. Mm -hmm. um, you can see a lot of the different like you've got one that's got a slab side and one with uh, round vents and then sort of the very traditional style where it's got the um, riveted piece of metal down the middle and he's got rectangular vents on the front yeah so hopefully anyway. we'll have those off the sprue and to show you properly yes. in another video pops them together yeah. <laughs> um we've also got um chain swords like uh sheathed chain swords which is yes. quite cool so yeah they're on the sprue yeah we've got um they're also a earlier pattern of uh chain sword so yeah. they've got like the the top the top side has a bit of it cut off where you've got more where you can see some of the teeth which is quite cool because well, it goes around to the other side because I think what it actually is meant to be representing there is because we've got a maglock sheath there to hold it on because these oh, yeah. should glue onto the back of the backpacks rather than being the normal standard handheld chainsaw that they're used to in a 40k I kit. Think, by the looks of the images here they're going on the legs. No, it will glue it. What will actually happen, mate, is it's just like the close combat weapons in Calf. Like we'll have to look at the instructions in a bit. But yeah, you're getting our initial reaction. <laughs> this to is a this kit is literally straight out of the box. With for the pulled the first brew out and we're like oh look at that cool things because if it's anything like calf it'll just glue onto the backs here on mm -hmm. just next to the vents so because then it follows that line which is how it keeps the same line at 45 degree angle yeah on the model itself so we've also what have we got we've got power fist for the sergeant yeah. uh lightning floor for the sergeant with a nice it's but it's a it's a standard sergeant pointing gesture with pointing claw. gesture, but you've, obviously he's instead of um, standard normal four K when mm -hmm. you've got essentially like a bunch of power knives on the back of your hand, his fingers are actually them. So that's that's like a really sort of heresy esque yeah. sort of thing. If you've seen the Catfrage Pattern Terminators out of the Cal set, they've got their fingers are the blades as well, which is quite I'm not quite sure how functional that is, but it looks cool. Yeah. 
<laughs> so what have we got? We got so we've got the backpack, so we can do a vexilia. Yeah. We've got a single bolt pistol. We've got a plasma pistol because everyone needs more plasma pistols. Yeah. Uh, plasma rifle, melter gun. What else have we got? A few melter gun. A few, few meds. Heads. Um, we've got a nice sort of. Um, well, it's the sergeant crest. The sergeant crest. Yeah. Which was model on to the helmet in the betrayal at Cal set. While here, it's a glue onable. That's option. quite cool. So we'll have to see how it goes, because I can see that going horribly wrong and ending up with wonky crests. Yeah. Uh, What's nice as well, like, um, some of the Forge World models, they have essentially, like, a square one, so it looks like someone's just, like, cut the top off a, a broom, p- popped it, it on well, their it head. It is a broom handle type thing. And I love I love that, so I might I might have to do that. So we've got, yeah, so we've got all those different helmets, which are probably difficult to spot detail. Yeah. Let's get that down so better, so we've got a better video feed there. There you go, folks. Square that up. There we are. Perfect. So we've got the different helmets, which you can see some of the different styles. We'll yeah. hopefully get some of these together so you can see the differences because everyone wants to see the differences. We've got the aforementioned umbra pattern bolters. Let's just flip the sprue over so we can see the torsos a little bit better. So yeah, so the the Mark III's got more of a sort of knight style helmet. So it's, yeah. so it's very sort of um, a lot of the books describe it as a plow shaped. Helm. Well, it's plow shaped for deflecting rounds that yeah. hit against it, and it's reinforced across the uh, front of the chest. You can see that with at least lower plates here, which hang right down to the groin. Uh, also, reinforced shoulder pads in comparison to the Mark IV. Lots of rivets, lots of rivets, and extra extra plates. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we've also got we've got a heavy bolter as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got a nice sort of very sort of gladius style power sword, which is quite cool. And if you folks can see that. There's a power sword. There. There being blo- oh, there's there a power sword. I didn't even see the power sword, sword though. That's awful. Yep, so yeah. there he is. He's oh, more... and, a cha- and a chain fist hand as well. Have oh, we got chain fist hand? Sorry, not chain fist. Chain sword. Oh, yeah. Chain sword. Or standard chain sword hand. Mm-hmm. Yes. Lots of cool stuff. I really like the thumb hammer. But I play Salamanders, so everyone has a thumb hammer who's a character, essentially. <laughs> right. So that was a really, really cool sprue. Yeah. Then we've got the mm-hmm. legs and arm sprues. Right. Um, could I just have the box, please, Dave, so I can yeah. pop these, or the lid of the box, so I can just pop them in there. Yeah. Sure. We've got a... No, sorry, folks. Pop those over there for now. Right. What have we got next? So we've got legs, haven't we? Mm. Ooh. Oh, These look good. Yeah. So we've got, so we've got legs and arms. Oh, that's reasonably exciting. So there's actually quite a lot of weapons, more weapons than I was initially expecting with this set, which is surprisingly nice. So these two sprues we've just got, so mm-hmm. the previous sprue and this sprue, that's probably going to put a 10-man tactical squad together. So what we got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10. Yeah. Yeah. And so is got... it going to be... So is that... Oh, is that going to end up with two Thunder Hammers per 10? That's a... Oh, is it? <gasps> That would be stabby awesome. Oh, look, we've got lots, we've got more close combat. Because it's well. the same model of the claw. So, actually. Now, I believe, if we have a look. Um, so, if we get these together and get this together, oops, you'll have we a... can sort of compare the two. Because it looks like we've got the same, the one with the backpack and the one with the, the ones with the backpacks mm-hmm. and the chainsaws, they're the same, mm-hmm. but they've been attached to the bodies and the legs. Yeah. Which is very interesting. It's very possible that, in reality, how many, they sit like that. How many torsos have we got there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's enough to make ten. So if you get on with showing the models, I'll see what else we've got in the box. Because cool. that's slightly unexpected. <laughs> yeah, weren't expecting that. This, but it, it looks like um, this one with the backpack and the thunder hammer sits in the middle, and then the legs and the body sit on either side of them. In the the press, essentially, or the mold. Cool. So let's have a look at the legs and the arms. These are these are really for legs and arms. I'm, I'm surprised by the arms because the arms are normally like there's not much interesting. In the Mark IV, if you have a look at those ones, they had like a little extra sort of guard over their hands. Uh, these are really something to have a look at because uh, right. they've obviously got reinforcements over them. Sorry, I'm just gonna. Zoom back in. Let's move back in for you folks. There we go. Ooh, there we go. So yeah, here we go. So we've got legs, legs and arms. So yeah, they've obviously got reinforced greaves 
lots of um, if you want like a, a more elite veteran squad, you could just put some nice gold on there. I think I might do that. So they look, they look really really good. And interesting enough for this set, the legs are in two halves, and uh, normal sort of uh, power on these marines normally have a single leg. But that is um, that is the problem they mentioned with Mark III because of the intricacy. Because if you have a look at the backs of the legs, they've got all of these separate plates. Like the fronts um, are more reinforced because that's in the the history of the game. That's what they were in the history of the actual story. That's what they were, they were for. They were for um, close combat uh, breaching work. So you had lots of armor at the front, not much at the back. So you've got all these segmented plates and all, and like these. I don't even see any pistons, but you've got like this sort of, uh, sort of traction belt. I don't know—is that a radiator there? I don't know if that's a radiator. That'll that be an little... external power cable, mate. Ah, so because power they'll cable. run the power cables around the back of it. Because the whole point is that uh, with the Mark II power armor, is that they still had to run a lot of the cabling across the uh, front and the like, and that's what created the areas of weakness on it. Mm. So with the Mark III, they put reinforced armor plates across the front to cover power cables but they still didn't have the level of technology to cover all of that and provide adequate cooling on um, power armour. And that's kind of what came along with the Mark IV pattern. Yeah. Mark III had the weaknesses, but put them all on the back because the idea was that it was front-facing. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm just, just looking at brain models. Um, yeah, so very interesting. They obviously have got specific pairs they want to go with, and it's going to be very difficult to put them together and for them to be right with the wrong one. So, um, but always try and follow your instructions, folks, um, and try and, I'm sure if you do that, they'll go together lovely. Um, so yeah, you've got obviously uh, a lot of bolter holding arms, and then the the ones on the trigger, so the right hands, they're actually, they're missing the hands. Like most of the kits are nowadays, they have the hands on the guns, so it's very sort of super interchangeable. So yeah, um, there isn't much, you've got a couple of holstered bolt pistols and uh, plasma pistols, which is quite cool. So that's pretty much it. Those are lovely, and if you can get, if you can paint them really nicely, they'll look really, really good. So I have taken stock of the sprues that we've got in the set. The answer is, yeah, it is just one plasma gun, one heavy bolt, and one melter, etc. Per ten, because what they've done is they've actually clipped off some of the sprues. <laughs> and done them separately, which is a little odd. Um, that's the kind of thing I've seen Mantic Games doing, because you can actually see on the sprues, let see if I get that to focus, where they've been clipped off at the factory. Not that I'm going to complain, because there's still lots of Space Marines. It's a slightly odd decision. Yeah. Well, I normally find myself doing that anyway, yeah. to actually get round oh, the yeah, kit. That's, that's <laughs> why I, I, I completely dismember kits when I'm actually building them. Um, it's just odd because at the end of the day, that means there must be cast offs because they'll have come out of the machine like this, and then someone at the factory will have to clip them in half. So maybe they're going to sell extra weapon sprues because they'll have lots left over. But I guess plastic is cheap, while the actual sprues and the um, steel moulds are expensive, so it may be right. more cost efficient to do it that way. So, what are we going to move on to next? There's lots of exciting exciting things in that. Well, I've put the Sisters of Silence, which are... Hmm, I don't know how noticeable it is from there. Mm. They're actually in a different coloured plastic. They are, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. that's very interesting. Because it's, it's not... Because I thought it might be one more, lighter. but we've got another one, which I will put underneath the camera, because after all, you would all like to see it. Yeah. Um, um, which is also a lighter plastic. Mm. From an outsider looking in, excuse me, I'm, I'm just observing <laughs> no, this. That's all right, that's all right. Um, it looks like it's more of a pearlescent style kind of uh, yeah, plastic. It's it has much more of a shine to very, it. Very, very Probably because of the cloaks. Yeah. yeah, well, it's probably a thinner plastic because it'll still be mm. a uh, polystyrene. You guys can see the yeah. rest of it. Yeah. It'll still be hard plastic, which is polystyrene based, I believe. Since I yeah. did my reading up on my plastics, it could just be. I hope it's those... just mold release mm. or something like that. But we will have to see. Yeah. And they are dated twenty sixteen as well, so these oh, are yeah. very very new. Um, yeah, they've got lots of lots of lots of options. Um, their legs and bodies are set because my god, I'd not like to put those together. Those are very very fiddly, but they do look very very cool. Well, I know what we were told was that they'll be 
five sisters in the box, obviously, yeah. and they will all have options for the two-handed close combat weapons. The what have we got? We got bolters yeah. and we got flamers. Mm. Yeah. So these are one of the weirder ones because they're gonna they're an anti psyche unit because the Thousand Sons themselves are obviously a psychic heavy legion yeah. and these guys are what evened up the fight at Tiska. Yeah. So they are essentially witch hunters. Mm. Uh, there's something that yeah, occupies a rule space that I don't think really exists in forty K and definitely not in thirty K at the moment. Which is anti psyche. But of course, in the Horus Heresy, so that's also the... anti demon as well. Anti demon. Yeah. Um, well, obviously, in um, the Horus Heresy series produced by Forge World, um, the Thousand Suns don't have rules yet. They are getting rules soon. Yeah, hopefully by the There's, end of the year. Yeah, but... there is a book which is about the Burning of Prospero. Yeah. Inferno. Um, yeah, Inferno. So it's going to have rules for the Custodian Guard, um, the Sister to Silence, the Space Wolves, Thousand Suns, and their militia. Yeah, it should have pros. Well, early sets of the rumours have said uh, Prosperine Spire Guard as well. As I think it was the Xanophine um, Mechanicum, oh, who yeah. are a local brand. Well, I say local brand, a, a local to Prosperine Space um, Forge World, who's have because in Thousand Suns they were the ones who'd made the uh, Castlax variant, which was psychically enabled by was it the Pyre? Brethren, um, I'm not sure. Okay, because the Pyre Brethren were all about fire. Yeah, but they also specialised for some reason. They specialised in they did fire and they specialised in siege. And there was a whole thing about psychic amplifying crystals that let them be psychically controlled. So, oh, okay. Rather than the um, full digital and Organic. bizarre techno relics of the Mechanicum, they were actually integrated with the Legion Force. That was one of the. More interesting things Ooh, from yeah. Thousand Sons. So um, pop there. So that's so the hopefully system. we're going to see how those rules uh, get implemented. But that would be very much in the territory of Inferno rather than the yeah. next couple of months and so to do with this. This one it's... is the Sister Sprue, and uh, this one is the Standard Marine. You can also see that this is a much darker grey than this one. So it it's probably not going to affect much. It's probably going to go good, go just as well together with plastic loot. It's just an interesting little factoid. We've well, we'll find out for you. It's, it's mildly worrying because it's reminiscent of older um, PVC blend plastics which came on sprue, like with the Warzone third edition set. And so I have this nightmare where I'm going to discover it only goes together with super glue. So right. So hopefully not the case. Next really big sprue in the box. Oh, Tartarus. Yeah, the Tartarus pattern terminated. So we are going to zoom out so you can I'll see. I'll zoom it. out. You... Thank you, Dave. So these guys are. Um, they're the next sort of level they sit between the present um terminates so the ones you can buy from vw and from us indomitus from indomitus pattern. the indomitus pattern yeah and the cataphractic pattern which are the very sort of segmented ruinesque dudes who came in the cal set and you can now actually buy them separately uh so these guys sit in the middle um i i really like these guys these well, guys be absolutely wonderful if you want to do car caradons Oh God, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of lightning claws, and uh, well, yeah. the Carcharodons did use the Tartarus pattern in. Portugal, yeah, that's they? because they had a lot of um, weird relics, and they were incredibly questionable when they turned up and just killed people because of all of their. Like the Minotaurs, who were also good. yeah. So yeah, what we've got on this one? Well, we've got lots and lots and lots of bits and bobs. <laughs> lots this of is... lightning claws. All uh, the lightning claws. A different pattern of combi bolter. I'm afraid yeah. my fluff knowledge is failing me. I don't know um, what that pattern's that's, called. That's the same one as the guys in Calfa doing. So that's the Tarsus pattern. Ah, oh, cool. It's just two Tarsus bolts glued together. Mm -hmm. So it's the same one the guys wielding in Calf. Because mm. you know, it's got lots of like it's very boxy and well, you can still see the barrel of the gun right near the end and it's got a box mag. So, but that's one. I could be wrong, but I'm. It looks identical. So. Your best guess is better than mine in this case because I honestly they've got don't another, know. They've got another Oh, that's clever. So they put the chain. So obviously, with the um, lightning claws, they're existing as add ons to the power fists because they've gone with a more. It looks like they've gone with a more simplified model where the power fist is the base. Yeah. You can add lightning claws on, or at the top of the sprues, there's these little bits for the chain fists. That's cool. I like so that. So that means that you can produce a unit all with lightning claws, all with chain fists, but taking up much less space on the sprue, which has left yeah. the space for Ooh. your mighty powers of a heavy flamer, a Reaper Auto Cannon 
And that's the oh, Volkite there's Charger, the Volkite. which everyone got excited about. I was and kind of hoping there'd be more for the power armor, but that hasn't And happened. there's the there's the Plasma Blaster, which is essentially a massive double barreled plasma gun. Yeah. That's an assault which free is... plasma gun, so yeah. Damn son. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I really like that. Too, I tell you what, I want it to be assault free, but it's assault too. Yeah. Um but yeah, that's really cool because I have a lot of cataphracty bits at home that I really can't use because yes. they're for the cataphracty. And they had lots of leftover arms. Not yeah. really the cataphracty wanted power ar- uh, weapons, but mm. they only got fists, claws, and chain, chain fists. fists. Uh, so that was yeah. But I was oversight. quite invest- inventive with my chain fists and made them into shield guys. Because mm. why not? Yeah, so um, again, the much similar as the cataphracty pattern, the legs are in two halves, so you've got like the bulk of the legs. Yeah, and then it breaks then at the knee. Breaks at the knee, so you, again, follow the instructions, folks, it should go together all right. It's possible that you might have a spare leg as well. Hmm. Um, you've got this one here, which has got this sort of extra sort of um, bit of sort of crenellation on the top, and that's obviously for the sergeant. Yeah, because look, it's got the matching. Yeah, kind you've of got a uh, pleated. Yeah, I want to say pleated skirt, but that's that's a bit schoolgirl. Uh, I really <laughs> shouldn't know. Are they pauldrons? No, because pauldrons are what you have on your shoulders. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, uh, these guys have got more of a um, contemporary dreadnought feel to them. Yeah. So they're what the cataphracty was to the uh, very early marks of power armor. This is to the Mark IV. So it's essentially, the, they were essentially built at the same time. Yeah, so they're the using... helmets on this are also very much oh, in the vein of go, the Mark yeah. IV. So if you have a look at a couple of the helmets, they're... No, that one is nigh on identical. Zoom in, zoom in a little. Zoom in a little. There we are. Yeah, perfect. Oh, wow, this camera really does have a nice zoom, Elliot. So, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so as you can see, very Mark IV stylings yeah. on that there helmet. Yeah, so these guys have... Um, like the Contempt Dreadnoughts, they've got a big sort of band in the middle where two points meet. And they're very sort of rounded. Obviously, that's like in the flap to def- deflect bullets and stuff like that. Very interesting things. That shoulder pad there, which is almost Legion specific. It's got some kind of roundel going on, hasn't it? Uh, which one's that? That one. Because all the others, because we've got these pads here, which are blank, and then we've got this one, which has. I imagine that's for the sergeant. Yeah, I'd imagine that's for the sergeant. It's almost definitely designed for a thousand sun, but there's plenty of. Oh yeah, pads. that's an, that's another thing with these guys. Um, they're all just generic. Same thing as the Cal sets, which is really really cool. So um, you can pick this up and make it any Space Marine chapter or Legion that you like, which is fantastic. Because um, as we said earlier, you're getting sixty percent off what these yeah. guys should cost. So because let's be honest, we're probably going to see these kits as single kits eventually. Because they did that with Calf. They did that with Calf about a year um, later. I don't see why um, uh, someone like like GW would invest this amount of money to make these and only make them once. Yeah, because they've also put a lot more effort into making these kits properly multi-part with the, all the available options. Mm. So clearly these are intended for a separate release. So yeah. buy them now when you get yeah. them cheaper and you can buy them nice and help pay for everyone's Christmases here. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, what else have we got? Well, we've got lots of weapons. We've got a power sword in there for our sergeant. Yeah. Um, the combi bolters. That's that's about it. Yeah, and you've got various torsos. I do like the one with the... What, the heavily studded the one? The heavily studded one. I do like that. Zoom in on that a little just to show it off, because it's pretty. Yeah. And there's a nice one with some thunderbolts on it as well. Which is cool. Having a fail. Okay. Yeah, so that's your heavily studded one. And... Yeah, so we've got a nice variety of yeah. patterns on the torso, which is going to be good to stop them getting monotonous, especially if you go crazy like I did with the cataphracty and pick up 30 of them in the end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which could be an option because I'm sure there's going to be a lot of swapping around with people swapping around with their friends and various folks online to try and get their optimal set for the kit. Yeah, so that's, a, that's an awesome through. Um, I believe that makes all five of the Terminators. Yes, it does. Yeah, yeah so... Terminators contain, um, contained within one through. Expect to see these in the near future, and they'll join the cataphractic pattern as a single kit. Cool. Right. Do you want to do Ooh. characters or custodies? Do we do characters or custodies? Um, should we do, should we do the custodies to the end? Do the characters? Might as well, because the characters oh, so. will be brief. Well, yeah. We also so, We might as well start with 
Araman. Mm, Araman. Because he this was... looks familiar. Yes, we never saw him on mm, eBay. No, he didn't turn up on eBay at all. So nice and close up. There we go. He's Araman, isn't he? Yeah, <laughs> he's Araman. He's... So we've got as. Many people pointed out he's got his uh, little bit of Space Wolf Mark III for going on his base for to provide him something nice to stand on. Yeah. So he's got his lovely robes. Is it a uh, Hectas staff, something like that? I couldn't. I couldn't tell you. It's it's it's, it's a very Egyptian sort of glaive style. Yeah. It looks thing. Egyptian. It it's looks a psychic cool. weapon of the Thousand Suns. Yeah. It's all good. He's got his hand outstretched for casting spells. We'll just flip him over to see the detail on the other side. It's a Games Workshop character on a sprue. Yeah. Uh, they never look that great on the sprue. You take them off and they go all together because they're yeah. digitally modelled and they look lovely. So. Yeah, so he's a, a very similar sort of um, 3D mould sliced up on the computer. Sort of um, one of the... What's the word? Clamshell. There you yeah. go. That's what Clamshell, clamshell characters. characters. Um, similar thing like the the chaplain but he's super cool and if you ended up I imagine if you ended up with multiple of him you could have a little bit of fun and do some kit battering with him make him into a captain or something because I'm probably still like I'm, I'm picking up the set so why not um, I'm just going to have him as a librarian fair yeah because they did in the silly fluff note yeah Thousand yeah. Sons librarians did detach service with other legions so you can always have a thousand sons librarian with your legion don't worry about the model oh what have you spotted i was just seeing if it's the same color it mm. is the same color yeah seems like it's only the sisters yeah it's, it's only the sisters who are in that different colored plastic and that could just be our set these yeah. things they happen it just they could have been cast at a different facility with a different mm, blend right. so this is garigor fellhand yeah, so he's the Space Wolf character, the Space Wolf character leading the attack. He was definitely not Bjorn the Fell Handed. Yeah. Despite <laughs> as much as we want him to be Bjorn the Fell Handed, he's not Bjorn the Fell Handed. On the bright side, that leaves him open to die Game of Thrones style. Yes. He's some dude. He's who's... some dude. But he is, he does have a very, very pretty model with lots of classic sort of um, Space Wolf styling on it. He's actually a little bit more multi-part than Araman is. Yeah. Well, what a lot of people were saying online was he's a really nice base for doing Space Wolf characters because, you you know, even if you just stick with the torso and then replace the head with a piece of Mark IV or Mark III and use some of the options from that kit, you end up with a very nice multi-purpose character. Yeah, that's cool. a wolfy, wolf, wolf yeah. kind of beard and stupid hairspray hair kind of set going on but he's a lovely base yeah for producing he's, other characters he's nice because that's the problem I had with the captain in the cal set he's really hard to do anything with because of where his arm is yes because he's in because he's um, sorry Dave I'm just going to so because he's got he's got a comedy bottle like that and he's got his chain fist and it's really hard to do anything with that because you can't take the chain because nothing goes there you can't because I was like put a hammer on him and it's like no it doesn't work so he's but these guys look like they're easy if you end up with multiple of them like definitely keep them because they're beautiful models but if you end up with multiple of them or you don't like the characters you can definitely do something with them to make them look super cool all right well that's enough on that guy all right we'll be reading the book and we will yes. totally we tell will you find out all, all the things about him <laughs> so Araman is easy it's like he's Araman he does okay, some stuff. So we've got a Custodes sprue. Let's see oh. that's a little... There we are. So that's how it all fits together. God, look at that. <laughs> uh, these guys just... Yeah. C custodian Guard. So uh, for those of you who don't know, the Custodian Guard are the Emperor's personal bodyguard. And it's pretty insane to have them as actual models. Um, so yeah, they've been around for the longest time. It's Guardian Spears. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, they're they're like a Space Marine, but more because they're they're not just warriors. They're bodyguards. So they they are essentially they like they're like a trained assassination and stuff like this. They're a lot more um, unique mm. each one. And if you've read any of the fluff, you know that it takes it takes a lot longer to make. Custodian Guard than it does to make a Space Marine. 
but they were also the first of the genetically altered warriors that the emperor created so he got a start on them early yeah so this is a fascinating spree we're gonna to have to zoom in on some bits of this because this is gorgeous just, uh, this is one of the ones that's been boggling me from earlier pictures revealed I'm just trying to even now work out the finer details of it. So what have we got? Oh, so, so fun things worth noticing because oh, people have moments about are the lack awesome. of. Sorry, I just noticed there's like the, <laughs> the the back of the backpack is yeah. fantastic. That's why I'm zooming in on it because one of the moans that a lot of people have had about the armor variants is the lack of power plants and venting. As you can got see, them. custodies actually have an internal power plant with vents. It's one of those lack of detail issues yeah. that has come up with people talking about the kits from earlier blurrier yeah. pictures. That's, and as you can see, when it actually gets into our so hands, cool. it's actually an incredibly nice kit. So I'm just going to flip it over, because one of the things I've been trying to work out just while I've been staring at it is the level of leg detail. Mm, okay, legs are, legs are, they seem to be opting for more, obviously because of the technology they have, they can like slice these guys up a mm. lot. Uh, admittedly, you've seen it with the characters, but the characters are multi-part. Um, the best way they've made use of it is with multi-part kits, is finding a way to use them. And obviously a lot of them have got um, half legs, like this guy here has ah, got... No, he's, he's not missing... got a half leg. Hang on, sorry. Yeah, he's, I'll he's... zoom out so we can see what we're talking about. Yeah, so, um, yeah. yeah, they're following up like the Terminators did, so they're sort of missing below the knee one leg. Yeah. Uh, but but this, this... Actually, sorry, Chris. That's right. Okay. This is the part that's been uh, bugging me because I was trying to work out how it all worked together on the sprues. So that's why I turned it over. He's missing the front half of his leg, which is um, actually here. There. Okay. So I was wondering if they'd um, done the shin guard separately, but I think it's just one of, another concession they've made to make such a detailed because it's it's and the depth uh, 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 that is the actual problem with plastic there's, casting. Yeah, there's just so much so much detail on these guys. Yeah. Is detail and depth of where our what issues arise. Are those? That's gems, because this is another thing I was going to talk about. Because oh, yeah. <laughs> sometimes you can never shut me up. Okay, <laughs> is one of the things I'd already noticed was with these shields. Oh here, yeah, there's a hole in the middle. Is they have a hole in the middle, and it is bugging me. How? Because if on the fronts of the models, when they're actually combined and built up properly, they have gems on, and I'm sure there's a very technical reason why it's like this but the gems are actually separate on the sprue yeah so that solves that mystery which is the nice thing about getting our hands on something is we can actually solve some of the mysteries yeah of how it all goes together yeah so what we what we got going on um we just sort of been oogling this um obviously you've got the backs and you've got the fronts of the armor so what the hell the legs like? hmm. oh, yeah they have, oh they look so good so you can steal that over trying to get these close-ups of some of the detail that one immediately because my god these it's one of those things like with most kits you, you have to go and have a look at them like um we're gonna have a set on saturday so you guys can come down and see it that we're gonna have hopefully them all together so everyone can come down and have a look at each different model mm -hmm. and see what they look like but the helmets look fantastic um if you guys have seen the cover of the first heretic novel um with the with the galvor back with the okay with the, essentially a possessed chaos marine um clawing at one of the custodian guards and he's got a, it's very similar it's very much inspired by that and obviously this is all inspired by the original jumble archer art with the guardian spears and interesting enough um you've got swords swords with bolt guns built into them which i've never seen before Obviously, the Guardian Spears are very, very recognisable because they're essentially just a spear with a bolt gun and a sword on the end of it. So they're sort of a glaive-type weapon and a shooty weapon. Um, but yeah, you've got big power swords with two bolt guns on each side. Yeah, well, the rumour was saying that that's going to be a twin link bolt gun. There's been lots of rumours on the internet about the rules coming out for these. To be honest with you, they all seem a little off, so I'm not yeah. going to go into detail on those because yeah. I don't think they're actually... Worth well, I think I think we'd probably say that they're definitely getting a two plus save. Yeah, I yeah. think it's safe to say it's a two plus save. Beyond that, mm. I'd love to see them with Galvor back type stats, but that's personal opinion. So yeah, those are the those are one of the word bearers specific units. So they're essentially the first like chaos space uh, possessed space marines. Yeah. So they're like toughness five and it's two yeah. wounds each. We they're, should be looking at getting monsters. the rules for them in thirty k in November, 
and the word is that the Games Workshop will have a PDF up with the 40k rules for Sisters of Silence and Custodies across the next week. Hopefully it'll be along with the pre-order date on Saturday, but that's not set in stone as far Ooh, as I'm aware. Yet. I've, just no- I've just noticed the... the uh, what are we sure? Oh no, no, they're all like that. I thought it was a leader's head. It's like, oh, I was just looking at the the, cre- the eagle crest on his head. It's just it's so cool. Yeah, yeah so they've got like there. these the lovely cloaks. Uh, well, I say lovely cloaks, lovely cloak, which I assume is for a squad leader. Um, That's a mystery because um, yeah, what, what were they called? The the leaders, the well, squad leaders of the. I don't know what the squad leaders of the custodians were called. I'm afraid. Yeah. I can't remember either. But like, because Constantine Valdor was at Prospero, so one of the queries has been: Are you going to be able to build Valdor off a multi-part plastic kit, or will he be part of a Forge World character series? So mm. that will wait us in the mysteries of what's in the rest of the set. Yeah, cool. So we've shown so off those. Should we? Have we've shown off all the models. Look at Let's have a look at all of the other orders. bits and bobs. Uh, welcome back, there, folks. Small. It wasn't really a technical issue, but no. We Stop. got better with our technology. We got better with technology. For I once, stand up technology did, zoom, so didn't I'm... get worse, it got better. <laughs> um, awesome. So you've got a plethora of bases, a load of them.M um, you've got the standard 32 mil, which are obviously for the majority of the Marines. Um, the sisters are on 32s the as well, aren't they? sisters are on 32s. We'll have to have a look at the yeah. instructions and see. I believe they might be... And then the 40 mil are for the Terminators and the Custodies. I would imagine. Yeah, that sounds correct. To that me. sounds about right. But we'll quickly have a look at the instructions. We'll get, that, get to those in a moment. Since you never know, there might be something we've missed on them. Dice. So as you can see, I'll get a couple of these out. Very nice dice, actually. Mm. So um, it's definitely not uh, following the same system as um, Kalthas. So because we've actually got proper dice. So we've got how many what we got? Four d sixes. Um, d ten. We got obviously they're different colours. So red for thousand suns and grey for the space wolves. So we've got three d eights. Oh, four d eights. Pardon. 48s, 3d10s, and 1d12? Yeah, and 1d12. So this is obviously going to relate to the um, rules of the Burning of Prospero game, uh, but these are quite nice to have. It's nice. Um, also, uh, we're going to be getting some special Space Wolf and Thousand Sun themed ones. Not quite sure what they're going to look like. I imagine they're going to they're going to have the logo on the one because they don't like to put it on the highest number. Because we always want to see ones. We don't want to see the nice sixes or twelves or eights or tens. Nope. Don't want to see those. Anyway, um, yeah, we're going to get some nice Space Wolf themed ones in. Um, they are going to be limited to stock because they're only going to hand over so, so many out to us. Uh, same with we're going to get art cards for the, it looks like the Thousand Sons, the Space Wolves, the Sisters of Silence, and the Custodies. So if you've been uh, following GDW's um, Warhammer TV, um, they keep popping them up occasionally like we got the Space Wolf one yesterday so. yes. or a couple of days or so ago I can't remember what it was yeah, they're nice because um, they're like the Forge World yeah they're like the Forge World art, sort of which I guy, guy standing there with straight arms but it's really nice to see all the armour and um, a lot of the Forge World books they do it to show you different sort of colour schemes and stuff yeah. it's because they're following the models set out in the Osprey books ah cool <laughs> yeah so we've got those those are quite nice so they're good for like wound wound markers and stuff if you don't want to play the game but obviously they're key to the game itself why don't you just tuck them in the top of the box okay, I'll, top, I'll pop them in the top box you can sort everything out later so let's see we can transfers Elliot do you mind zooming in a little bit please of course so these are quite nice a lot uh, again like the ultra room ones and the word bearer ones from Kalf um, they were let's see so super handy if you yeah. were building those particular legions or even chaos um, warbands so um, we're looking at these space wolf ones so they're very nice sort of deep sort of red well, it's a deep dark red that will contrast nicely with the yeah. grey it's part of their heresy yeah and right at the bottom there we've got some aquilas for the sisters of silence 
<laughs> good because he wants to try and paint Aquilas on the back. I don't of their know heads. if I want to put though. I don't want to know if I want to put them on them at all. Well, I, well, I wouldn't put them on them at all. But for I, people who are more confident, yeah, people who have it's a step above having to paint them on. So let's yeah. see. So the Thousand Suns ones are unfortunately white, so it's not the best contrast with what yeah. we have. But it will end up looking very nice on red. <laughs> uh, so hang on, if we just do, Ooh. if we just do this, there's the Sergeant ones that is red, that are red. Pardon, mm. I should say. So um, essentially, like that. So you've got the. I'm not sure if that if that uh, symbol has a name. The actual thousand sun, uh, sort of. Not as circle. far as I know. Yeah. And then you've got the scarab as well. So they're very, very similar. Hmm. And those ones, the red ones, are for the Terminator Sergeant. So they're very much the same. You've got um, similar ones for the Legion of Exilia. Yeah, because the scarab will be the scarab occult, which was one of the core forces at the defense of Tizka. Mm-hmm. But. The actual straight then, up Thousand Suns uh, Sun then, logo. I'm not uh, so sure about. It's probably just, they're just Suns. Oh god. Apologies, viewers. They can see it. Cool. And then sort of down the side here, you've got a load of glyphs, sort of Egyptian style. They're not quite pictograms, but they're in the same same vein. So they're sort of um, very sort of straight and sort of geometric, unlike the Webbear ones where they're all just sort of crazy scribblings. Cool. Uh, so that's those ones. So we'll pop those back in the box. All right. So here's some cards. So here's some cards. Um, again, Ooh, they're pretty a... on the back. So Ooh, let's very see. Nice. You zoom in. Oh no, actually, it's perfectly fine as is. Sorry, Elliot. So yeah, um, these are obviously going to be part of the the game itself. Um, following on from Betray the Calf, where you had uh, you drew cards. Um... <gasps> Warp flight one. Oh, yes. so it looks like they might have some kind of warp charge system. Yes, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, I've got a feeling these are all the same. <laughs> uh, warp yeah. Mastery 1 or 2. Oh, immediately, and some of them have got um, different abilities on the bottom of them. I don't think you can see that. Ah, here we go. Yeah. yeah. So. so those are all um, Warp Tide, Warp Siphon. Oh, excellent. So it looks like, because uh, obviously we haven't read the rules for this set yet, yeah. uh, is that they are actually going to have uh, different psychic powers themed after the um, psychic brotherhoods of the Thousand Suns. So that's the uh, Raptori, which uh, look like they've got the telekinetic style. Is that Sorry, yeah. right. there yeah. we go, folks. Yeah, see it nicely there? It's a bit on the her still. There we go. So we've also got... A Psychic Maelstrom from the Raptor, a Kind Shield, which is some of their most famous stuff, because that is, after all, what causes the whole battle which the um, box set is themed after. Um, and we've got the Pavoni with a Bioelectrical Storm. So I think we can grab those ones and we can go and flip a couple over. If you have a look at the back here, we've got all of the symbols for the, um, the Cults of the Thousand Suns. So um, you've got the Raptor there. You've got the um, Phoenix goes with the Pyromancers. So it'd be the Pyre and the, the Pyre. Corvidae. Yeah, the Corvidae. So ones after that I forget. Yeah. Because <laughs> the Pyre and the Corvidae were clear to the novels. Yeah. So, um, and then the the eyes. The, I can't remember what they're called now. They're like the the seers essentially. Mm. So we got on the back here. So we got another Panoni. Pavoni. Pavoni. Thank you. So yeah, they're all to do with uh, biomancy and stuff like that. Yeah. So these guys are all about uh, manipulating their own biochemistry to do cool stuff. Uh, here we go. The Athe Athene Athenians. Uh, Phantom decoy. Yeah, so these guys... Um, well, would they be the telepathic ones? Yes, they did lots of... Uh, future. Oh no, the Corvidae is the ones that predicted the future, wasn't it? Yes, that's yeah, why I was. Uh, that's why I was wondering about that one because you were yeah. putting divination with them, and I think these guys are te the telepaths. Yeah. So, so yeah, there's another one. So I think we get the general theme. You of get the, the cards. general theme of them. Yeah. <laughs> They've each each card has a, an ability and. Um... Uh, oh. Let's. Let's see. Yeah. So, so, it's whole... so then we have. Ooh. So those seem to be uh, Sisters of Silence. So then... Cards. Oh, no, hang on. As you can oh, tell. Yeah. As well, because we've got the symbol of the Aquila and the Aquila. dual lightning bolts. 
which was the unification's era symbol of the emperor and his forces. So that's over there. So we've got Iron Will. So this is this is essentially the way the other forces are going to counteract the powers of the Thousand Suns. It seems like you're just going to play like Snap with them. <laughs> just d dish out a bunch of um, Iron Will cards. So we'll keep going through these because I imagine these are all the same. Iron Will 1. Just keep going until something... Oh, Steel Will. So that's 2. Adamantian will, there we go. Cool. So that's a three. Sort of, a sort of deny the witch style. Um, yeah, I think there's a few higher and numbers at loss. the Ooh. end which have some worded effects as so well. So loss of will, so you can get a zero. Yeah, and they've got sisters, the little sisters of silence, sort of um, watermarks at the bottom. So, yeah, I think that's the card. So oh, Will always... of the Emperor. Here we go. Uh, this card generates one willpower. At one... Yes. Oh, so it does, it does different things. So if Custodia's on the board, it does cool stuff. Uh, Unbreakable Will. So that's got one of... That's got an ability there. So after the current power has been cast, and the fix resolved or resisted, the one of the... So essentially the, war, the psychic phase ends. Again, folks, we haven't looked at the rules yet. We're just sort of unboxing things as we go. Uh, Will of Silence. There we go. So that's something to do with the sisters. There's another Will of Silence one. Alright, so that's the general theme there. Do you want to. So if we zoom it out, because we can show off some of the bits that come with it. So that's cards. So. Let's see. So. All of the rules for the models in the set come with their own nice and fancy presentation pieces. We've got the Tartarus pattern terminators for Thousand Sons. On the other side, we've got the uh, Traitor Legion veterans and their uh, sergeants and uh, rules for Azak Araman as well. Then on the Loyalist side, we have the Space Wolf forces. So once again, Legion veterans, their sergeant, Guy Gorfellhand. And then on the flip side of that piece, we have the Geo Custodes and the Sisters of Silence. We have a nice instruction manual with everything worked out in digital art. So that's mm -hmm. going to be a joy to work with. If it's very, anything... very cool picture of Araman on the front of it. <laughs> and a cool picture of Araman on the front of it. But it should be a pleasure to work with, just like the other digitally worked out ones. We've got a nice Legions at War book, which will hopefully have the fluff pieces, so we will find out who Guy Gorfellhand is, and then we can tell you, which will be nice. Uh, a rule book. Yeah. Most games have rules. Yes. Unless I'm playing them, in which case they do have rules, but they're not the rules that are in that book, because I can never remember them. Pop that down there. And so then we finally come to the... Game board, so, so um, that. it's again, it's more blocky. Well, it's squares rather than hexagons. And we're gonna we are gonna have a quick flip through the rules and see what the rules are. I imagine they can only contain a certain amount of, in um, so, there's our prettiness in um, Calf, it was the amount of bulk, so uh, essentially the, the dreadnought could only take up one space because he had three bulk, whereas in normal marine, you could have three in one square because they had one bulk. Uh, yes, we've got um, lots of different tiles here, lots of different um, psychic effects, which you may have seen on a couple of the cards. I'm pretty sure I saw that one. Um, some portals, um, one of the uh, erect land speeder. It's actually one of the... The birds. javelin land speeder. The javelin land speeder, so it's not just a normal one. Um, flip it over? Cause big might... statue of madness as well. Yeah, and I'll see the scenery tiles have different things on each side. Uh, you've also got these as well, so these little counters here and here and here. So it seems like the game is probably following the same thing as uh, Calf did, where each character or each unit uh, had two actions essentially. Oh, that's fine, those can, they're going to come out of there anyway. So that's that one. So there's lots of um, sort of items and stuff and little bits of terrain. Hmm. Right. So here we've got um, a bit of Tisca. <laughs> so it's very sort of marble and 
crystal and so you've got lots of um, sort of glyphs and stuff. Very Egyptian, but not too over the top, which is lovely. Yeah. And we've got flip side. More of an acrylic <laughs> theme as well. Hopefully, I won't ruin the cardboard. But yeah. Yeah. Very, very reminiscent of um, the Silver Tower with the portals and the sort of oh yeah blue, very Zichian kind of stuff going on. Yeah, so that's more of the more of the game board. This is the one that I think is the most tisker because we've got a portal. Uh, it's all the gold and just want someone to go and build a big. Build a big piece of terrain based on this. And once again, a ruined piece because yeah. this is, after all, a battle across the city, and that rarely goes well for the people in the city. In yeah. this case, everyone dies. Sports. Scrap that. Mm. So, another kind of urban internal piece. <laughs> More. Very Tisker, because yeah. Tisker is a white city of learning. And lots of tiles and pyramids and glass. Um, I'm sure that works out very well for them. That's the that's very um, yeah. So we'll, we'll actually just things have gone flip really back wrong here. The right way round. Yeah. This is this is very this is very bad. Look at that. It's the smashed imperial aquila, and there are eyes in the lava, and oh god, <laughs> it's all, all types of nonsense going on. Everything is bad. Nothing side, is good. Got, Oh look, that's 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 very um, yeah, it's some blood and it might yeah, be the, in a, the a thousand sun, a thousand sun, some blood in the shape of each, which is not the best thing in the world to have in your city. Yeah, that seems to be everything. There we go. That's, in that box. that's everything in the box. So, um, we will be back. We will be back uh, with hopefully the models to show off actually constructed yes yes so uh, you guys can get an idea of scale and just the detail because it's it's all well and good looking at them on a sprue but it's nothing like them together so obviously you can see like the helmets um of the mark three a little bit more and just it's just nice mm. well, no, we're that they will be painted yes but they will be assembled. not that quick <laughs> but one of together. each will be assembled uh you said that you may be able to get one of each ready yeah or, yeah that should be should be possible so we'll return in part two yeah part two the sequel. <laughs>